this is why most people don't create content, right? It's because most of your friends and things, normal people, quote unquote, it's like they don't post much content because oftentimes they're afraid that they're going to get judged or they don't. And of course, some of them just don't want to or whatever. And that's cool too. But a lot of people, if you tell them, hey, you need to post a video of yourself talking to your camera, right? It's like they will freak the fuck out. Um, it really is. It, it Well, it, it was uncomfortable on the other side of Cringe Mountain, you know, whenever I was first doing it. Now I don't give a shit. I would totally do it anytime. Um, but it's like you have to you have to be willing to have the balls to go over a Cringe Mountain or be stupid enough or whatever you want to say it is, right? You have to be able to go over Cringe Mountain to come over to the other side and then you can realize, oh, you know, you can kind of calibrate. And of course you grow and you get older and you get smarter and you get more experience and stuff like that too. But it's like everybody has to go through that initial cringe. What is up, Mr. Matt McLeod? What's up, dude? How's it going? Oh, man. Now I'm living the dream, dude. It has been like we just <laughs> talked about like six or seven years since we've really chatted. And this is uh, this is cool to talk face to face, man. I know it's a nice little homecoming. It's a nice little, uh, <laughs> it's a nice little rekindling after after quite some time off. But yeah, I'm stoked to I'm stoked to chat today, bro. For yeah, sure. man, I appreciate you jumping on. So yeah. I know who you are, and a lot of people know who you are. But for those who don't, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. A lot of people, yes, so many people know who I am. I just walked down the street in Austin, Texas, <laughs> get bombarded with people like, "Oh, it's fucking Matt, sick." Uh, yeah, so as I just alluded to, so I'm based out. I'm based in Austin, Texas, right now. Um, I am originally from Kentucky. I lived in Kentucky about 25, 26 years of my life, and then I moved to New York City during the pandemic, actually, to live with my ex girlfriend. We broke up. Pandemic ended. I moved back to Kentucky, and then just recently moved uh, to Austin, Texas, and I love it. I love it here. I really do. Nice. Um, but but yeah, so that's that's just as far as where I've been. And then I'm a, I'm an online fitness coach. I'm a registered dietitian, um, and uh, yeah, and honestly, those that's that's what I've done since 2015. I've been a coach since about 2015. Now I started in college at the University of Kentucky, got a few clients. It snowballed from there. Um, and I honestly, I've just been following what has interested me since then, whenever it comes to the coaching space, whenever it comes to diet and exercise and, um, just what I feel mostly that I need to hear. Cause oftentimes we, the, the thing that we're best at teaching is the thing that we need to hear the most. And so the type of content that I have put out has evolved over time as I've evolved. And I think that the tribe and the audience of people that I've gathered during that time has been really dope because it's kind of like speaking to other people who are similar to me. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, that might be a little bit narcissistic, but it's kind of just more like I, I like having more friends who are interested yeah. in the things that I'm interested in and at least in the, the worldviews in, in the lens that I see the world. And so, um, yeah, that's just a little bit, I, I've, I've been doing that since 2015 and I've, I've really enjoyed it and I plan on keep doing it. So yeah. I love that's, it. That's it. That's it. Cool. Well, there's a lot to unpack there and I can't wait to do it. But yeah. before we jump in, you have a special concoction that you've created the trifecta Correct. trademark. Yes. The trademark, so, not real, but it should be real. <laughs> so what's somebody it? else, I think somebody else actually trademarked it, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> I did it first and I have proof that I did it first. Uh, Anyway, yeah, so the trifecta. I don't know. Wait, is this a video podcast as well? I, I'm, yeah. I'm just audio. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just making sure because if I need to describe it, it's different. So the trifecta. Well, first, let me give you a little bit of background context. Let me make sure I'm speaking still into the mic here. I want to make sure I get all three of my drinks um, in, in, the, uh, in the camera. But the trifecta started because one of my favorite hobbies is simply going out to eat. I love going out to eat with friends. I love the experience of going out to eat and I love taking my time and I want to eat slowly and I want to get appetizers and I want to get cocktails. I want to get wine. I want to get several entrees that we can share, get desserts and just really take our time with the whole experience. And what I realized is that whenever I went out to eat, 
every time I went out to eat, you know, they normally bring you a glass of water, like as soon as you sit down. And so they bring the, they bring the glass of water, the water is already there. So you don't have to order the water. But then they asked me what I want to drink. And I'm like, Oh, I'll get, um, I'll get a diet Coke. Right. So then I'll, I'll get a diet Coke, the diet Coke comes. And then they also ask about alcohol. Typically they're like, Oh, do you want any other drinks? And I'm like, yeah, like, give me a red wine or something. And so I did this consistently every time I went out to eat and I real, and everybody would start making jokes at me. They're like, Hey dude, are you fucking thirsty or what? And I, I would always have, I would always have three drinks in front of me. And I realized, and, and with me, I can be very OCD about the way that I do certain things. Um, and I realized, and, and it's kind of one of those things where somebody pointed out to me and then I was like, oh, I do do that, don't I? I don't. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's just like, but what I realized is I love the experience of going out to eat, but the experience of going out to eat is heightened whenever you have these three ingredients. And I realized that these three ingredients, it wasn't about the specific drink that I had, right? So it wasn't necessarily wine or a bourbon, right? Or Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or whatever. It doesn't have to be those specific drinks. And it's not the number of drinks. That's the other thing that people mm. really mess up is that uh, they think it's just, oh, you just have three different drinks. So that's it. And I was like, no, no, no. It's a specific, <laughs> it's a specific cocktail of drinks, of three different drinks. And the, the three ingredients of those are going to be, so wine is, or for example, what I have here, I have a Pinot Grigio from Italy. Um, it's going to have alcohol in it, right? And so alcohol is a depressant. It's more of a downer, but it also gets you a little bit loosey-goosey, right? Then you also have, I have a Coke Zero here that's going to have some caffeine. It's going to have some caffeine in it. That's going to be a stimulant. It's going to be an upper, right? So it's going to counteract the downer of the wine. And then the water here in my responsible delinquents cup is going to be the equalizer of everything. So it's just going to keep you from getting too up or too down, right? And it keeps you hydrated. And it also make, yeah, just make sure that you don't get too much in either direction. And so with alcohol, caffeine, and water. These work synergistically together, the ingredients do, to take your experience, say, from like a seven to a nine or a 10. And that is the trifecta. Well, this right? is a great podcast. Yeah, it's just, you. It's, <laughs> it's all about taking the experience to another level. And so yeah. it's just like with podcasts, you want to take the podcast, make it better. Sometimes you can have alcohol, you can have caffeine, you yep. can fucking take Adderall, you know, like, I don't know, depends <laughs> on what you're into. Well, that's the beauty of Brewing for Conversation. We get to have something to drink. So exactly. I have a San Pellegrino. I love sparkling water. That has become a guilty pleasure of mine. Shout out to Nick Laporte, the burger buff. Forget me on this. That's, that's very bougie of you. No. I know, right? Oh, my God. Um, it's good. Then I have this cab from Austin. Nice. Paso Robles? Yep. Got recommended sure. that yesterday. I heard it's great. This will be a first yeah. experience. And then, of course, the Diet Coke. But... Nice. Is there an order that you drink this in? It's just, it, it's, that's also the other thing is like, I, I would get them and it's just the taste, right? So the Diet Coke is going to be carbonated. The water is not going to be carbonated and the wine is, the alcohol is going to be more bitter, right? It's going to mm -hmm. be more alcoholic. Um, so it, I just drink them in rotation. It's the same way I eat my foods. Like I eat my foods in rotation as well. I don't like eat just my steak and then just my potatoes. And then just this is like, I take a bite of steak. I take a bite of potatoes. I take a bite of broccoli. I take a bite of steak. I bite, bite, you know, like I go around, I go around. And so every time I'm at the steak, guess what I'm drinking next is the yeah. fucking alcohol. I'm going to drink the, I'm going to drink the red wine. So it's just, it's important. And these details are important. Right. And it's just the, it's, it's something that I've realized I do naturally, and it takes my experience up a notch and this can go for so many other things in life than just the trifecta but i kept doing it over and over again so then i would start taking a picture on social media and i would i would put it up on my on my instagram and i would tag it the trifecta and i kept doing it every time because i go out to eat you know every single week and people would catch on and now i have people to send me drinks like every week <laughs> they're just awesome. they just tag me with their drinks and so yeah that's that's where it started and this is might be a hot take but anyone who eats their side first before their like Maine just freaks me out. I'm sorry, you, you guys are doing it the wrong way. Oh my god. Mm, um, like fries before the burger that you finish the fries first. I've got a buddy Ryan who does that, and it freaks me out. I think he's oh. doing it wrong. 
Interesting. Yeah, no, I guess now that I think about it, no, typically the the steak is probably going to, like if I have a steak, the last bite of steak is going to be the last bite that I take. And if I have a burger, burger. the burger is what I'm going to finish last. Uh, But you rotate it. But I'm going to rotate it. Yeah, I'm going to, I rotate through each one. I'm really glad we're covering the hard hitting issues on this podcast so far. This is, this is the stuff that matters. Everything else. (laughs) The other stuff that people talk about is fucking stupid. This is what this is hey. what all conversations on podcasts should be about, not about like philosophy or something. That's dumb. I know. This is what this is the details that matter of life. I like it. Hey, this is from a seven to a ten right here. I agree. So I agree. you alluded to it before, but you've been coaching since twenty fifteen, and before when we were talking before we started, there's two main areas of what you do, right? You have the content and the coaching itself, and then you have like this marketing and branding aspect of yourself. Mm -hmm. How did you get started into coaching? I know I'm kind of throwing both of these together right now, but you brought up a good point. Like, how have you started this? What is, what has been your journey so far with coaching? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've, I started in high school because I wanted to get bigger and stronger and faster for football. And I, realized that the smarter that I got in diet and exercise, the quicker my results would come for football, right? And so that just kind of led to me absorbing everything possible. And I think this is where we probably originally connected was through the animal pack stuff, right? Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I think that that was because I originally read like Diary of a Madman by G. Diesel and shit, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And that's something that very, very few people know about. Um, but the animal pack blogs were one of the first blogs that I read on this stuff. And um, nonetheless, that led to me getting more curious about it and me becoming more um, uh, competent whenever it comes to diet and exercise. And so then I gained like 30 pounds by senior year. People started seeing me more as like the fitness guy. And then I realized I didn't love the football aspect of things. I just loved lifting weights. And so whenever I got into college, that's whenever I decided to get into it even more. Um, and I competed in my first bodybuilding show, my first drug tested bodybuilding show in 2012. Um, and then so like around campus, I, cause I was going to the gym like six, you know, some fucking college. I was going six days mm-hmm. a week, like two hours a day. I was, I was jacked. Like I, that's like all I did. I counted my macros every day. Um, and I became, I'm, I'm a very extroverted person and I made a lot of friends in the, the campus gym at, at Kentucky at the university of Kentucky. And um, then I, those friends started to know me as the fitness guy and they knew that I also kind of knew my shit and what I was talking about. And so they would, they would ask me questions. And then finally one of them asked if I would coach them and I did, he got good results. He was in a fraternity. He told other friends word kind of went around. Um, and I was like, cool, I guess now I have a small little roster of, of clients and I had a coach myself. And so I was like, I know this is a career path. And I found other coaches who were, were doing, um, you know, they were doing big things. I found Mike Vacanti, I found Jordan Syatt. And I was like, oh, these guys, you know, they, they remind me a lot of myself and they're crushing it. And they're, you know, they're, they're making good money. They're good people. They're doing it ethically. Um, you know, I looked up to them in a lot of ways. And so I was like, cool. I was like, they can do it. I know this is a viable path that I could potentially go down. Um, and so I just doubled down, you know, I just kept, I kept doing it. I kept saving money while I was in college so that whenever I got out of college, I would have enough to potentially do coaching full time. And so I had enough of a roster at the end of, uh, whenever I graduated. So I graduated college in 2016 and then I became a registered dietitian in 2018. Um, and by that time, yeah, I was able to go full time with all of it. And so I've just been doing that since. I've been doing that since. Yeah. What are you at workload wise as far as clients? I typically like to stay around like probably 30 to 40. Like that's, that's around my, my sweet spot for sure. It's like, and also over the past, this is something that I think enough people don't talk about, but the, I've been coasting, <laughs> like I've been chilling, you know, I, I, and, and I think I have, um, I get weird about saying the word earning things. Um, cause I don't think you have to earn things. I think if you have things, you can just enjoy them without earning them. However, I do think that I've earned the ability to coast right with my, with my career. Cause I have put in a lot of work. I have put in a lot of hours, like those, those times in college, yeah. whenever other people were partying and shit or whenever it was just like, I had a fire under me to do a lot of work. Um, 
And so I have been able to go to kind of those extremes, same thing with bodybuilding as well. And like gaining muscle and things, right? Like you can, you can gain a lot of muscle and then you can honestly kind of ride those gains for the rest of your life because yep. muscle memory is a real thing. And it's much, it's very hard to build the muscle, but once the, mu once the muscle is built, it's very hard to lose if you're mm -hmm. still going consistently. Right. And so um, I, I kind of feel the same way with business. I've, I've earned that right to coast. And I think everybody is always so obsessed in all fields with just growing, growing, growing. Like you, you've got to do this, you've got to do this or, or more so it's, I don't want to, it's, it's not that growing is bad, but I don't want to grow for the sake of growth. Yeah. Right. Like that's, I, I'm just like, okay, there's something, what, what's the reasoning there? Like, what do you, why are you wanting to make more money? Why are you wanting to make more money? at the risk of losing family time or losing your free time that you like doing other stuff or yeah. why can't you go take that lunch with a friend instead of working through it you know like um it's it's the same thing with skipping workouts and, and going out to eat instead like it's 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 it, there's all very similar parallels here but i think there's not enough people talking about um why they are wanting to grow <laughs> so much um past a certain point like of course i'm not saying of course you got to pay bills you got to do certain things but i've reached a point to where the lifestyle that i'm at i really enjoy and i'm, I'm okay with growing at the rate that i want to and at the rate i feel um is appropriate for this season of life that i'm in because i also think seasons of life are very important right so i'm 29 now i'm single um but in the past it's like that's whenever I, I do understand the period of growth where you're younger and you don't have as many responsibilities and you're just trying to, you're just so obsessed with growing this thing and you want to make it bigger. I think that's cool too. Um, and I also think it's cool if people want to fucking work 14 hours a day. I just think that you have to own up to that. And I think that you, you can't complain about other areas. Like you can't complain. I mean, I guess you can, but it's just like, I, I don't understand whenever no, I know people, what you're saying they're driving themselves fucking crazy with meetings and calls and their team and all this shit with like business. And then I'm just like, well, what did you expect was going to happen when you built this big? Like, what did you, I don't, yeah. I, and so I've just always been very meticulous about how I've grown my business and how I've arranged my business around the things that I love and not what other people are telling me I should love. And that's, that's what I think. Yeah. And I think that's key. I think that's a big thing is like, I've never listened to other people on what I should or shouldn't want. And I think that since I followed that path, that has almost always led me to where I want to go. Yeah. And I mean, and this hasn't happened overnight. A lot of people think with anything, stuff just happens overnight. Like you said, you've been doing this for a long time and really got started in 2015. That's almost a decade ago. Like, right, which is crazy. I remember seeing those, like your original website with all your testimonials, the email yeah. chains. Like I remember all that stuff. I'm like, man, this guy, he's sticking to it. He's getting it done. Like coming out with eBooks, everything. Like, I was trying to, Yeah, I, I just, it's just, I, dude, it's, it's the same. I, it, I've had the same outlook since I was younger. And I, I'm very glad that I have, I'm very glad that I, I've not been very easily susceptible to fall to the crowds or like what other people want or what I think that I should want or, or whatever because it's always it's it's led me to the right path in the long term um and, and i think i've what I've, I've followed is basically three things the first is going to be security which i think is uh, it's, it's obviously important for obvious reasons the second one is going to be fun and the third one is going to be curiosity so i just want to get those all out before i forgot them um, but first was security then it was fun and then it was curiosity um, and so the security one, that one's like the more logical, like, okay, sure. You can be, it's like the starving artist, you know, like, yeah. cool, you're an artist, you're doing what you love, but also you can't fucking pay rent. You can't pay bills and you're stressed out all the time because of that. And I was like, okay, that's not smart. I need to make sure that I can make enough money. Um, so that's key. But then the next is, is fun. And that is like, actually, I would say it probably goes security, curiosity, and then fun. Um, because the curiosity is just like, what? And they go kind of hand to hand together as well. But it's kind of like, what am I naturally interested in? And what would I kind of want to do with my day, even if I didn't get kind of paid for it? And I know that's kind of the cliche, but it's more so just like, what do I want to, how do I want to live my day? And then how can I structure everything else around that, right? So with my business, 
how can I, how can I figure out how I want to live my, my life and live my day? And then how can I set up my business in a way that facilitates that, right? As opposed to I'm going to work really hard and then I'm going to figure out my life around that, right? It's, it's yeah. kind of reverse engineering it. Um, and I, and I think that that's something that I've really, I've really stuck to. And I try to continuously, especially as you're scaling, because it can be hard because I'm like, oh, now I need to scale. That's the typical thing with coaching is like, oh, I need to hire the coaches underneath me. I need to hire a team and then I need to hire salesmen and then I need to hire like an assistant and shit. And I'm just like, I don't want to manage any people. I don't want to have any calls with anybody, no clients. Like I, I don't want to have any calls that I don't want to have. Um, I don't want to have any meetings that I don't want to have. I don't want to have like homework every single week. You know what I'm saying? Like with, mm -hmm. with some of the stuff. And so I was like, okay, how can I set up my business in a way that that makes that happen? And so it's like some people, and I'm okay with the trade-offs that come with that as well. For example, real quick, a lot of people think that with sales, like if you're a coach and you're trying to get clients, it makes sense to have sales calls, right? To, to try and book a new client. And, and typically most people are gonna hi have higher conversion rates if they do a sales call with somebody as opposed to doing that over email, for example, right? Doing mm -hmm. an email call with someone and trying to sell someone over email. I disagree. <laughs> um, or, or it's just like, I disagree in the sense that sure, maybe, maybe the sales calls for me could convert at a higher rate, but I'm not willing to accept that trade-off in my day to ruin the rest of my day because I'm gonna have that sales call and it's like, that's not gonna be fun for me. It just doesn't sound fun at all. I would much rather have a, a, I have a scripted email. I know how to do it. I send that email and I let them make their decision, right? Instead of like try, and I'm also not a big fan of like strong arming them and trying to use these different persuasion tactics or whatever the fuck they do on sales calls and shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, I'm gonna send them an email. All of my shit's over email. So it's like, it just, it, everything's cohesive as well from start to finish. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I, I really think that those three things, security, fun, and then curiosity. Oh, I didn't go into fun as much, but a fun is kind of the same thing, right? It's just like, what, what do I enjoy doing regularly so that I don't burn out in the future? That's the biggest key with fun mm -hmm. is burnout because the stuff is long and, and that's, that's what I'm realizing is that if I can follow my curiosity, stuff that I'm naturally interested in, and then I'm also having fun on a regular basis, and I can do that all while keeping the lights on and making sure I can continue to enjoy the trifecta at restaurants without having to worry about it, then cool. That's, I feel like I'm on the right path. I feel like you're very systematic. You build a lot of systems that help you in your day to day, help you in your business to streamline everything, make your day better, make it easier and be able to open up the doors for you to have more curiosity and have more fun. I very much more than you would know more than you could like more. I think, well, I mean, I think you, it makes sense and it's not, um, you know, it's not a secret that a lot of people who do well in certain things have certain rituals, right. And you have certain habits and things, but it's like, I think that I don't do it. I don't have these certain like morning routines and stuff that you might see as far as like, okay, I have to, I have to meditate, have to do a cold plunge. I have to go stare at the sun for 10 minutes in the morning. I have to, you know, like yeah. do all these certain, I have to read. It's like, there's not a big checklist of things that I have to do every morning. It's more so I also, I can like auto-regulate my rituals, if that makes sense. Right. It's like in the mornings, maybe I don't feel like meditating. Maybe I don't feel like going for a walk. Some days, maybe I do feel like going for a walk. Then I'm going to go for a walk. I, but I don't, I'm, I'm flexible. I'm flexible mm -hmm. with it and I don't beat myself up with it. And I kind of want to tune in to myself more as opposed to having this rigid set of rules that are arbitrary in the first place that I made up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why yeah. can't I, why can't I change my mind? Um, I'm the dictator here. Uh, <laughs> and so, but the main, one of the main things, one of the, it was funny. I was actually just talking to my barber about this. And it's a fun little thing that I think everyone should do, but I start and end my day with a laugh. And I think that that is, that would make the world so much better if everyone else would do that same shit. So I'm big into like stand up comedy and I, I love just turning on a comedy podcast in the morning. As soon as I wake up, okay. it's just, it makes me lighthearted. It gets me into the, a happy mood. It makes me not take my day so seriously, you know? And then also at the end of the night, I'll dissociate a little bit. I'll chill, I'll smoke some weed.
I'll listen to comedy. It's the best. It's the best. Who's your favorite stand up? Everyone, everyone should do it. Stand up comedian? Yeah. Well, here's the thing is some stand ups, I like their stand up more. And then some of them, I like their podcasts more. Oh, right. Okay. So it's like, it's because like, some people are really. You, they can be funny. They can be funnier in their podcast than they can be in the standup. You know, I think most. I don't know. It goes both ways. Um, I I do. I I really like standup. So I think my favorite my favorite standup would probably be Bill Burr. Like yeah. his actual <laughs> specials, yeah. Bill Burr specials are ha, always make me laugh really hard, <laughs> and I really like his outlook on life. And also, I feel like his his standups. Are they feel the most natural? That's the thing that pulls me it pulls me out of a lot of stand up, um, a lot of stand up performances. Is that they, they just hard. feel they well no they just feel so scripted. They just feel yeah. I I know they are scripted and, I, and this is why I can't do audiobooks is because it takes me out of it because I it's just I know they're reading. I don't know what it is. Really? But it's like I can listen to a podcast because huh. they're they're going back and forth. It's natural conversation. There's changes in tone. There's laughter. There's interruptions. There's us. There's ums. There's you knows. There's 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 more natural things that keep me in the conversation. Whereas an audiobook, I just feel like it drones on and on and on and on. And then <laughs> it's the same thing with certain stand-ups. If I, you know, if it's too much, I don't know. It, it can be with certain ones, but yeah, if it's too scripted. I don't like, and I feel like Bill Burr, he really, he really fucking knocks out. He's hilarious on podcasts too, because he's about, he's basically the same, which is why I think I really like him on his stand up too. Hmm. I don't know if yeah. I have a favorite stand up. I don't know. I haven't watched stand up in so long. Well, I need Bill to start. Burr, Bill Burr is definitely a good place to start. Yep. I know he um, is funny. I, I've seen a lot of clips of him. He's great. Oh, dude. Yeah. His is really good. Theo Vaughn is also really funny. Um, Theo's great. He's because, you know, he's from Louisiana. He's just like a Southern boy. <laughs> he's just a Southern kid. Yeah. And um, I, I really like him. But then my favorite, like, comedy podcast is called Two Bears, One Cave. It's with Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. It's really funny. Um, it's good. So, yeah, there's my little stand-up spiel. Nice. I'll check him out. So, when you were getting started and you were trying to learn, like you said, you want to learn as much as you can. Where, what were your outlets to do that? Like, where were you going to find the education to better yourself, to understand more, to coach people better in all aspects? Yeah, I, I think most of it, most of it was probably books and articles online, like blogs. But I think that the, the secret, the secret with this, it's like a advanced filtering system is, is like, uh, I found people that I respected and trusted and looked up to. And then I found out who they looked up to and trusted and respected. Right. So it, then it became like this web of, mm. I find Lane Norton, for example, whenever it came to natural bodybuilding, because he was in muscular development and he was in the no bullshit bodybuilding section of muscular developments. And yeah. that was like my favorite one because it was all about natural bodybuilding. And he's a scientist. He's got his PhD. Uh, and so he would use, he would, that whole column would be some scientific tip that he would give. And so he was one of the first people that I found. And I'm so glad that I found him early on because to this day, he's still been a very credible guy in the field. Um, and there was also, I found him and then I found other people that he looked up to and that he trusted. Um, and that just kind of led to this web of other people where I can pretty quickly like, okay, I can see them and maybe, you know, maybe I feel like they're a bad person or something. Right. So I'm like, okay, they're next, next, I'm going to go to somebody else. But it's like over time, cause you find somebody that Lane likes and then you find who they like and who they like and who they like. Right. And so it quickly becomes this quick, like not tight little knit community that you realize are like, oh, all right. I see this kind of crew in fitness or same with marketing or business or something like that. Right. It's like you find certain people that are more your style mm -hmm. and then you find out who they like and then you realize, oh, okay, I also, it's not a surprise that I also like them. Um, so I think cool. it's, it's not fucking groundbreaking advice, but I think it's something that a lot of people probably do naturally. And if they don't, you should start. You should do did you ever have a mentor or did you do this all on your own? Uh, no, I had a mentor. I had, uh, as far as business goes, Jordan Syatt was my first business coach back in 2017. Um, and so for people who don't know him, he's, he is still Gary Vaynerchuk's, uh, personal trainer. So Gary Vaynerchuk is like this 
Oh yeah. Big multi-millionaire CEO of several companies. Um, a lot of people think that he's just like this motivational guru, but he actually runs multiple million dollar companies, multi, yeah. multi million dollar companies. Um, of course he's got the motivational side, but anyway, Syed, Syed trains him. And yeah, Syed was my first business coach back in 2017. That's how I met. That's how I met Carter Good, who's my best friend here in Austin, Texas. We live in the same building. Um, and then it's how I met Jared Hamilton, who's another big time coach. Now he's been, he's done really well for himself. Uh, we were all in the same business mastermind and nice. we we've stayed connected ever since. And, and now we're, we're really good friends to this day. Um, so Syed was a, an original mentor and so was Mike Vacanti. Mike Vacanti was another one. And um, let's see, they were my first business mentors. And then John Romanello, uh, who's one of my good friends now too. Some people may know him. Some people may not. He's more in the, the writing space now. And he's also, he's also somewhat in the BDSM and kink space. Like that, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a coach on, on several different fronts, but he's such a unique, he's such a unique guy. He's so interesting. Um, but he came from the fitness space and he, he, he came from the, like the blogging space. He did really well with his website, with his blog. He sold a bunch of courses, products, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that that's typically the, the mentors that I had growing up. And then of course, whoever they liked and who were yeah. their friends and like who they were into. Right. And stuff. And so those little ecosystems I tended to, I tried to follow as closely as possible. So you got most of your knowledge about training nutrition and everything from the books more so than other people. Other yeah. Like blogs. I mean, but you had no direct mentor for the nutrition and training side of stuff. Well, so I had, I had, um, yeah, besides like I went to the university to learn dietetics, yeah. right. You know, so it's like for the nutrition side of things, I got a four year degree and became yeah. a dietitian. Um, so that, that was important on that role. But then on the training side, yeah, honestly, the training side was mostly myself because I'm not a certified trainer in anything. Uh, like I don't have any certification through any body company um, because none of them I thought were that great, honestly. And I, I didn't think that I needed them, to be honest, because I was I was learning so much. On my, I was so obsessed with learning about training on my own that the certifications just it, it was kind of like a, a nice to have, but it definitely wasn't a yeah. must have. Um, and a nice to have could even be a stretch, honestly. Uh, cause you could, all, hint at that, yeah. cause you could, you could put that money into something else and it probably would have been worth Yeah, Like I would put it into a business course, yeah. which is something that I think trainers don't do enough of is learning the, the business side of things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I learned the training stuff on my own. And I also had two online coaches myself, like fitness coaches. So I had Paul Revelia was my first coach, um, back in 2012, which is crazy. And then Jacob Trout is, uh, uh, He's not a coach anymore, but he was my coach whenever I won my drug tested uh, bodybuilding card in 2016. So I competed twice. You were shredded, the, dude. Both, I was both very shows. shredded. Shredded. It was dope. Yeah, it was fun. I'm I'm glad that I did it. I won't do it again, but I'm glad that I did it. Really? Yeah. How yeah, fun? I don't want to do it again. I don't care enough. I don't, I don't. I like lifting and I like I like eating well and stuff, but I just have other things that I'm interested in now. I want to. I want to keep building my business. I want to, you know, find my wife. I want to yeah. have a home. I want to do other things. And it's just like, it's not that you can't do those things and bodybuilding, but it's just like, I can, only, <laughs> I, I can only care about so many things and I yeah. don't care enough to, it's just, especially as a pro, it's like if I was going to be a pro, which I think I'd have to go re, like re-earn that pro card. And it's just not, it's just not something that yeah. I have any interest in doing. Yeah, that's so funny. You competed both of the same years I did. And for the longest time, I'm like, I'm never going to compete again. Like, there's really no point for me to, why would I? Now I'm like, man, I'm not going out like on that losing streak. Like, I'm going to do it again. So I made the decision uh, about a month ago, I'm going to compete next year again. So, Oh, nice. Um, Good for you. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I didn't think I'd want to do it again. I really didn't. And then it just hit me as I'm like, finally getting, like I was telling you, getting my health back, training again. God, dude, the difference of like, being 21, 22 and getting back in the gym and getting it all back so quick versus now and just the recovery. It's kind of brutal, man. Like I'm not sure. going to lie. Of course. Of course. It's definitely going to be different, but kudos to you. Cause also it's like, I mean, I don't know, maybe I would change my mind. I highly doubt that I would change my mind, I but I, mean, I think, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens, but I think that's great that I, excuse me. I like the idea of having the goal of exactly. doing it. 
like that's, that's it. it. It's, it's having the goal. But see, for me, I'd be like, I'm going to do a photo shoot instead. You know, I'm going to do something for my <laughs> business that I can also do like a yeah. photo shoot. I can have some lifestyle photos. I can do some stuff like in the gym, whatever. I can do some other things as opposed to having to do like my posing routine and stuff. But it's just like, if that's what you want to do. Great. It's like, I, I needed done. that goal. I need that that's goal cool. in my head. Like, okay, if I'm going to be training, like, what am I training for? I, I just gotta have a goal and maybe that's just how it is probably just how my mind works i have to have that that goal i can't just do anything i don't want to say aimlessly because taking care of my health is not aimless but right it's just competitive and side i guess that's fair that i mean that's what a lot of people hire me as co you know me as a coach yeah. for right like they they need that goal they need someone to push them they need the accountability yeah. and the thing is is like you could also go on that goal and you could get started on it and then you're like you know what now that I'm going, I got the ball rolling. I actually don't even care to compete because all I wanted to do was make okay. sure that I make sure that I'm actually doing this, you know? Yeah. And then the process becomes the reward in and of itself and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Now talking about those pictures in a photo shoot, your content is, it was always great. Your content's exponentially gotten better. And <laughs> thanks. I mean, it's, it's really good. How has that process been for you? Like where did... <laughs> You had these business coaches, and I'm sure a lot of them talked to you about getting content out, as mm -hmm. Gary Vaynerchuk did, right? That was his big thing, documenting everything, which I think yeah. you do a great job of. Like you document your life a lot. Thanks. Is it uncomfortable to do that, or has it gotten no. pretty natural? No. I like attention. Was it? <laughs> I, like I like attention. I like attention, and now I've been doing it for so many years. It's like my content brain is like always on. Um, and of course, I think I do a really good job of balancing things. And so whenever it comes to content, you know, I'm not the person who's at the meal and it's like, I'm always got my phone out or anything like that. I can take a quick snapshot and then put my phone away or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm just, I, I'm wired now to, if I see something like, oh, this would be a good idea for a piece of content or something. Or, but I also like, I do like the interaction with my, my people, right? This is why I said, I'm glad that I've stayed true to who I am because I built this, this group of people um, that are like me and that are interested in the same things that I am. And so I can post something up and I can say things and we can go back and forth and we can talk about stuff and we can enjoy the same things together. Right. And I yeah. think that that's one really cool part about build, building, building your own audience. Um, and, and I think this goes back to the fun side of things, especially recently, because I've been, uh, very, I've struggled some with making content and that's what I, that's, that's what I alluded to earlier as far as like coasting goes, because in the past, you know, I used to, I was making three Instagram posts a day at one point, um, back whenever I was building my initial following, but this is where I said, like I earned my right to coast. Um, but now it's, um, now it's more so like, I, I don't put so much pressure on myself whenever it comes to these things that I, again, I hate the, I'm supposed to do this or I should do that because I, I it's never worked for me. This is why goals actually don't work for me either. Like art, like arbitrary objective goals that are set by me, like revenue goals or something like that. It doesn't matter to me. I won't listen to myself. I won't do it. I, I, that's why, that's why I have to follow the fun and the curiosity because recently like the content that you've probably seen that I've been making is like these little like vlogs and I'm just cutting together some videos and shit and putting some text over it. And I was just like, that sounds fun to me. Those take me a while to make, but also that's the only content I'll make because I actually want to make that content. I don't feel compelled to make that content, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I kind of have to go, I kind of have to go back and forth with that a little bit. I need a little bit of pressure. Um, but yeah, I think I follow the fun and I don't, I don't, I don't beat myself up about it too much and I don't put too much pressure on myself about it. And also now that I've done it so much, it's kind of like whenever I do post a piece of content, it hits so much harder or it, it looks so much better or it is so much better than what I posted years ago because I have gotten better at creating content and my thinking has become clearer and I have a better understanding of who I'm marketing to, which has also been huge because it's like me it's like my person yeah. like that's kind of the best part is i'm i'm kind of marketing to myself and people like me so i know what i like and so i'm like okay i know if i like this my audience will probably like it too uh and that's just something i've i've kept refining and iterating on over time and even though i post less frequently whenever i do post it's typically a little bit more effective um and yeah, nice. that's, that's, that's typically what I've found, but you have to, you have to get over, dude, you know what? I actually read a, or I saw something 
one of my friends posted, I think it was a TikTok video or it was a reel or something like that, but they were talking about Cringe Mountain, right? And so Cringe Mountain is something that every creator has to go over initially so that they can get to the other side of Cringe Mountain, which is where you're cool, right? And like that. that you have you have to earn that coolness, right? And, and this is yeah. just, this is, and, and so many people, this is why most people don't create content, right? It's because most of your friends and things, normal people, quote unquote, it's like they don't post much content because oftentimes they're afraid that they're going to get judged or they don't. And of course, some of them just don't want to or whatever. And that's cool too. But a lot of people, if you tell them, hey, you need to post a video of yourself talking to your camera, right? It's like they will freak the fuck out. It's um, it really is. It, it Well, it it was uncomfortable on the other side of cringe mountain, you know, whenever I was first doing it. Now I don't give a shit. I would totally do it anytime. Um, but it's like, you have to, you have to be willing to have the balls to go over cringe mountain or be stupid enough or whatever you want to say it is. Right. You have to be able to go over cringe mountain to come over to the other side. And then you can realize, Oh, you know, you can kind of calibrate. And of course you grow and you get older and you get smarter and you get more experience and stuff like that too. But it's like everybody has to go through that initial cringe. If I go back and look at some of my stuff, and if I go back and look at my stuff six months ago, a year ago, four years ago, it's like I hope I look back and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cringy because, or that's kind yeah. of whatever. That's not as good as what I'm producing now because that does mean, oh, I'm I'm growing and I'm changing and I'm I'm producing better stuff. Like that's if I was like, oh, cool, I'm producing the exact same shit that I was producing several years ago. It's like that's probably not that's probably not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I like. I like that. And, but it's also, what's also funny is that on the other side of cringe mountain, whenever you're cool, like the cool people actually lean into the cringe. You know what I'm saying? It's like you lean into the cringiness about you and that makes you cool because you don't give a fuck about being cringe. Just yourself. You're just being yourself. Yeah. Like that, that's all, oh, that's always what it comes down to, right? It always comes down to just being yourself and being unabashedly yourself. And that's all I've ever known how to do. And so I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I've had, the the success that I have is just because I've always doubled down on myself. And I've realized that every time I double down on myself, not only am I happier, but typically it produces better business results as well. That is probably the most underrated marketing advice anyone could ever get. Yeah. Whenever they're trying but to pick it, a niche or figure well, out what to do in life, look in the mirror. Well, it's also, but it's, it's, it's the, it's the hardest, easiest thing to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's you got to like, unlock the door first. It's, it's, well, you have to, you have to give yourself permission to do it. And then you also have to be self-aware enough to know what that means and to have to, you have to dissolve the ego. You have to kind of like, you have to dissolve the ego and then also lean into the ego. It's a very, it's a very contradictory type thing to be yourself unabashedly and not care. It's hard, it's hard to say, like, don't care what other people think. And of course I still care. It, you know what it is? Is like, I still care what other people think but I care about what the right people think. Exactly. I care about what my people think and what I think about myself. And I think that it's so funny. Mm -hmm. Like I have a, we have a round table of people in my head, right? Like I have a, I have a round table of people in my head that I look up to. And before I'm posting a piece of content and this goes with anything, right? This is also just like, you could say this is your conscience, right? Is, is like, I, I, I'm like, what would this person think about this piece of content that I'm making, right? Or what, 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 what do I think? Or what does my best friend think? Or what would my parents think? Or whatever it is, you know, like it, it, it's all of these different kind of judges and jurors. And of course, at the end of the day, I make the decision, but it's still like, am I proud of this? And also do the people that I care about and love and respect the most, what would they do? What do they think about it too? Do they respect it as well? Would they respect it? Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think that's something that, that people don't, don't think about enough whenever they're creating. That's good. Yeah. That, that ego and just, man, that's the key to unlock the door, I guess, is finding the, the key to get rid of the ego. Which, which is very difficult. But, I, but that's something that's also one of the things that I think is not talked about in business enough is like, is, I mean, I think it's becoming more and more popular now. Um, but it is, like, I think a lot of people throw around that ego work type thing. But usually they're just saying it just to say it because it's kind of a buzzword and they don't even know what they're really yeah. talking about. And they're just, you know, what's funny is they're talking about ego work because of their ego, right? <laughs> like they're, it's literally like a fucking, it's very ironic. Um, so, so yeah, but I think I, I just genuinely enjoy being myself and I genuinely enjoy life. 
and then with my content i just try to express that whatever you can tell most act thank you like i i know i know and i'm i'm very proud of that <laughs> because it's something i have worked hard on but it's as as people have told told me that i've leaned into it more right like that's that's the best compliment is whenever they say oh your your honesty and your content is very refreshing and i think that that is that's what i really lean into i was like oh cool so people really like whenever i am myself and so that that allows me to trust myself more yeah so that every content that i'm posting more and more in the future whenever some past me would have been like oh no that's cringe or i do have people still like oh that's cringe i'm like oh you're fucking boring it's like so <laughs> you know it's just like cool cool i'll be cringe you fucking stay over there and be cool like that's fine I, you can you can fucking be cool i'll be over here and just keep doing what i'm doing because it seems to be working fine for me but dude even doing this like i was making content back in 2016 2017 and that got easier yeah and then i took this massive break in just a career change and i come back to doing this i've wanted to do this for like two years and i'm like oh god i gotta get on a camera and whatever and now i'm just like okay i'm having a kid what can i do right now to like start chasing some dreams sure yes i need to do but this and it is still like i look i'm looking at myself right now i'm like god all right my bald head shining shit like i hope it's not too much of a glare like just just little things you know you critique yourself it's just like who cares well well it's like it's because there's there's a certain point because you can't it, it's both right you can't care too much but you also can't care too little right this is where the responsible delinquents comes in right like this is so for I, we can go ahead and get into that yeah my, dive into it yeah my my community of people that i have uh the, my tribe my people on on social and stuff and my friends and myself, I have, we call ourselves the responsible delinquents and the responsible delinquents. If you have a Venn diagram with three circles, it's the intersection of, uh, what is it? Fitness, fulfillment, and shenanigans. And in the middle is the responsible delinquents, right? And, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's the, that's, it's how I said, like, I'm really, I've been, I've always been very good at balancing things in my life. Whenever it comes to fitness, whenever it comes to business, whenever it comes to relationships, whenever it comes to my own mental state, whenever it comes to partying, right? It's like, and I, I'm not trying to say that to like brag, like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. It's just, I've always, I've, I've been good at doing that. And I realized over time, as I was producing content and as I was living my life, I was doing these things and I was like, oh, I'm just kind of calibrating all day, every day, my choices. And some of those are responsible choices. And some of those are delinquent choices, right? And so this is like a prime example of this is, so drinking, drinking alcohol, for example. Um, if you drink a cocktail every single night, the weekend cocktail that you allow yourself to have doesn't taste as good right? It doesn't, t it's, it's not going to be as enjoyable if you saved your cocktails for only the weekend or save the alcohol only for the weekend, right? Somebody who parties all the time doesn't get to savor that really fun party that one weekend out of every two weeks or, or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that it goes with so much. It goes with your fitness. It goes with business. Um, it, it's just, it's just finding the middle ground. It's, it's living in the gray. And I think it's constantly checking in with yourself and you're like, Oh, I've been very delinquent lately. And I need to, in order to live up to my values, it's like, I need to be more on the responsible side of things. Oh, and I actually have the, um, I have the responsible delinquent, there's actually, there's an actual definition that I have. It's right here. Hold on. Because this, this explains it. All right. So an individual who upholds their core values and integrity in all circumstances, but also likes to partake in the occasional shenanigan-filled activity, so long <laughs> as it does not violate the aforementioned requirements. Right? I love that. So it's, it's like, you can be a delinquent as long as you're still acting in alignment with your highest values. And so the highest values is what dictates all, right? And that makes sense, right? This goes back to the judge and the juror and these, these things that you have in your head, your consciousness, like God, whatever you want to call it, right? You have these, this, this in your head of, of what right and wrong is. And you know, right, if you've been partying too heavily, you're like, okay, I really need to fucking, I need to bring it back a little bit. Or if you've been eating out too much, 
or you've been drinking too much or whatever it is. Um, you got to pull back a little bit and it can go the same way with the other side, which is something that I was going to, I was going to start maybe talking about in my content some on like the, the biohackers and the over optimizers and the people who are so fucking militant with their routine yeah. and they're snorting athletic greens every day. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just, yeah. they're just so perfect with everything, but it's actually leading them to be very neurotic, neurotic. And you know, their HRV is saying that they shouldn't train today. And so they don't train. And then like they're, or they're, they're so worried about their sleep score. Or they're so worried about these things that it's actually having deleterious effects to their health. Right. And they're, they're, it's, it can go both ways. You can be so uptight. You can be so responsible that you actually become like, what did me and Carter talked about this yesterday? Um, your, your, your responsive, your, your responsibleness becomes more delinquency, right? Because, because you are leaning so far in on the other side of the spectrum that it's actually hurting you. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's, that's, that's something that, that people don't talk about enough either, but, but that, if you can find that balance, of course it's hard, but if you constantly, this is why I think constantly checking in with yourself and constantly re revisiting your own values and what's important to you and what you care about. Again, not what people say you should care about, what you care about and what you think is right, what you think is wrong and the values that, that you have framed your life around. It's like, that is what dictates all the other decisions. Um, and, and I think that if you can continuously go back and hold yourself to a little bit of a higher standard too, over time, and if you, well, also you, you check in with yourself and you reflect, you're like, oh, okay. Normally I think it's okay to party three times a week, but I've realized that my life has been very shitty. My sleep is bad. My relationships are getting worse. I'm not working as much. I should probably recalibrate that and maybe go to once a week or something. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, you have to, you have to also, uh, so Mark Andreessen is this like tech billionaire guy who had the really good quote. What was it? Strong views loosely held. And I think that that's a really, that's a really good quote because I can have these convictions towards these things that I think are important to me and these values and stuff, but I'm also not uh, egotistical enough to change those in spite of new evidence, right? If I have new evidence that my life is going shitty because I keep following these certain principles that I think are correct, well, then I'm just being delusional. And so hmm. it's like, I have, to, I have to go back and check in with myself and really not bullshit myself and hold myself accountable um, and act accordingly. And so responsible delinquents is kind of the, the catch all term. It, and it, it just happens to work out perfectly. Right. It is That's that, great. it is that kind of oxymoron. Um, uh, you, the responsible delinquent. And so I've taken, I've kind of taken that and ran with it with my community and it's really, a lot of people really like it. They want me to make merch and shit like that too. And so like, I will at some point, I will at some point, but it's just not, I don't care enough yet for that, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep, keep going on that train. Cause I think it is a really good idea. And I think it's something it's hard to teach balance. And so I, I really want to lean into it even more. Definitely. And self-awareness is key for that, right? You got to know when you got to know where your limits are. You got to even know like what your high values are, how exactly. a lot of people don't have self-awareness or at least enough, I think. So how do people get past that? Like, how, do they, how do they grow that self-awareness? Good fucking question chris um i don't know uh no i think <laughs> i think it's uh uh this is this is just my this just popped up in my head like i'm just, just no i know no, no, no i've thought about this question a lot me and my friends have talked about this question a lot like ad nauseum i'm just trying to think of what makes sense to take it i mean i think this is where this is where mindfulness and meditation comes in it's kind of like metacognition kind of like thinking about your thinking um become so helpful uh i i think it, yeah, it's always going to come down to most of it right it's going to come down to doing some ego work and doing some like rewiring of these scripts in your head it could be going to therapy right that could be a really good way to be actually that might be the best answer to be honest is to go to therapy for people who um are really struggling uh i, I think or or not struggling honestly like i think anybody could go to therapy but I think if you are struggling with that and you, you can't, you know, you've been trying to figure out certain things in your life, but you keep being the common denominator of getting in your own way. It's like, that's probably a good idea that you should hire or hire a coach. Like if it's around fitness or something, right. It's like hiring a coach can bring you a lot of self-awareness because 
you don't know what you don't know, right? And so having a coach there that points these things out that maybe checks in with you every single week and they notice your patterns and things. You're like, Hey, did you realize that you did this every single week? <laughs> and they're, you're like, Oh no, I did not realize that I did that. You know, the fish doesn't know it's in water. Um, and I think a therapy can, a therapist can do a really good job at, at pointing that out themselves. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, I think being willing to admit you're wrong and, and admit that it, you have to, you have to be in search of the truth. You, and, and, and the truth does not involve the ego, right? And so that's, I think, constantly what I'm trying to get down to is like, I'm trying to get closer to the truth because you can't always get to the exact, there's not always going to be an objective truth, but you can get closer to what you think that is based off of these certain feedback mechanisms that you use in your daily life, right? Whenever it comes to, you know, you are, you're gaining tons of weight, and your sleep is really shitty and your relationships are going to shit. Like I was talking about, like all these bad things are happening. It's like, you have to, if you really want to make your life better, then you have to own up to that. And I think that that per, there's a big part of personal responsibility there. Um, and so it's like, yeah, there, there can be, there can be a lot of work, but I think it's the, it's the willingness to want to get closer to that truth that I think is, is hard for a lot of people. Um, and so, yeah, being curious, asking questions, doing a lot of self check-ins. I don't know, fucking do mushrooms. That might help. Uh, honestly, I think, I think a lot of it comes down to how people are raised too. You know, like having, having parents to hold you accountable, that is so key. Um, right. That's the, that's the past though. We need to look forward to see course, what we can do now, right? It's like, of course, there's so many fucking different things that could have gotten you into the position that you are now. But it's like, I think what is key is, is like, what what's Facing what are we yeah. doing now? What's going forward? What is what's the future looking like? And then learning um, how to do that for your kids if you want to have kids. And oh, totally. Keeping that keeping that train moving. Absolutely. That, that's a pretty good thing to do in your life, right? If shit happened, bad shit happened to you in your life, you make sure that you don't pass that along to your children, <laughs> yeah. so that they don't have to experience that. I think that's a pretty good human thing to do. For sure. <laughs> so as you built this tribe. When did you start noticing like your social media following and your tribe was getting larger? Like, was there a certain turning point? Was there something you did that kind of flipped the switch that you can remember? Well, it was whenever, honestly, it was whenever I was probably around whenever I was working with Syed back in 2017. This was back whenever um, like the infographics and stuff were just starting to get big on social media. And I was posting, this was Instagram. The the reach on stuff was was really high too. And so you just, you were able to reach a lot more people. And so I was doubling down and posting three times a day and I was gaining followers over time. My content was good. Uh, and I think that it was a combination of, I knew what I was talking about, but then also I had the personality and my stuff was unique enough to overlap in enough areas to build there's a cool term that I learned called like a personal monopoly, essentially, right? And so a personal monopoly is going to be the intersection of your skills, your personality, and skills, personality. I want to say there's one more thing, but I can't remember what it is. But you get the idea of a personal monopoly. It's just, it's kind of like how, what makes you the most you and how can you double down on that, right? right. And, that's, and that's kind of what I did. So people were making, I knew that infographics were big and were getting popular. So I threw fucking family guy in my infographics, you know, I threw the office in my, my infographics because I like those things. And I, I, then I also did like weird shit in my videos and I would, I would put my personality into it. And in the captions, I learned how to write, I learned how to write really well. And I, I learned how to articulate things better. I learned how to put my personality into things. Um, and I think that's, that was whenever I built the, the majority of my following. And then it's still been on those same principles that I've continued to grow, not as much width because I've been hovering around the same followers. I think, well, so right now I'm at 13 K, but it's like, I've been ho hovering around 12.5 to 13 K for the last several years. But, but what's happened is I've recycled followers and also I've built a lot of depth within my followers, right? So the width, the width isn't like 13,000, you know, it's fine. Um, but it's like, it's nothing crazy. 
but the depth that I built with with my followers and things like the the people who've stuck around for a long time, you know, I, I think is it goes really deep. Um, and I think that that's there, there's something worth even more there than if I would have double, triple, quadruple the followers that I do now. When did you get really into writing? When you got that writing coach? Yeah, it was, well, it was probably, it was around 2017. It was whenever I found Jordan and Mike because they were both big into writing too. And they talked about how important it was. Um, and then also, so John Romanello was their mentors. It was their mentor. Um, so it's like, again, this is how I found John and John was the best writer in fitness for the longest time. Right. And so I just happened to find these people who really pushed being a good writer and communicator. And I'm so glad that I learned that. And I started to just like, I fell in love with learning how to write, or I'm sorry, with learning how the, the body works and diet and exercise. I learned about writing and I started to really enjoy the craft of writing and, and putting my personality into things and articulating myself better and communicating more effectively. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what ended up separating my content from a lot of others is that a lot of these coaches know how to talk like they know their fitness shit, but they don't know how to communicate it in a, in an effective way or in a fun way or in a a way that, um, really anyone can uh, understand. Um, yeah, anyone can understand, but also they like emits their personality into it as well without being like, um, without being annoying, <laughs> that yeah. annoying. Yeah. A lot of them overcomplicate a lot, it seems like. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And it's like, they're just, you know, they, that's what I'm saying. They got to get better at communicating. Yeah. And it's funny you brought up G Diesel and Diary, Diary of a Madman. That is like what inspired me to start writing years ago. Is He, he was a big part of that too. He, because yeah, his writing was dope. And I was like, oh, I know this is really good writing. He talked about writing and shit too. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to, I'm, I, I want to be one of those people. I just had him on the podcast a couple episodes ago. If you have to check it out. I think I saw on your page. I think I saw on your page that you had him on. Yeah, that's dope. I I hope uh, he's doing well. He's a good dude. What a, yeah, such a good dude. What a great guy. Inspiration. Um, well, what has been your biggest struggle throughout your entire journey of doing this and building your personal brand, growing that, growing your, and not even just your personal brand, but just your coaching business as well. Hmm. My biggest struggle. Was, also, I think, no, it's okay. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Why'd you just choose your name? Did you just want to brand your name? Or did you, did you ever think about yeah. building like a fun name? Like a well, innovate elite performance, stuff like that? My, my first fucking website was mcleodconsultingservices.com. Oh, yeah, dude. I remember that. Yeah, it's not the, it doesn't just roll off the tongue very easily. <laughs> and also McLeod isn't the easiest to spell either. So it's like, uh, that was my first website because mattmcleod.com was taken. Um, and so I was like, okay, McLeod Consulting Services LLC is, is my LLC. And so I was like, cool, I'll make that my website, I guess. And uh, and then finally, yeah, then I ended up going to mattmcleod.org simply because it made sense for, it, I, I knew that I, at the end of the day, I think brand is the most important because brand allows you to do anything. If people mm-hmm. fuck with me, they fuck with me. If I'm into fitness, if I'm into golf, if I'm into drugs, it's like, it doesn't matter what it is. Like they, they fuck with me because they fuck with me. Um, as opposed to if I would have just made a Matt McLeod fitness, that would have pigeonholed me into the fitness space. Um, and so that's, that's why I put on mm-hmm. cloud. But as far as the, as far as the struggle goes, I would say it is learning to ride the wave, right? It's learning to, because in consulting, it's like, you're going to have good months. You're going to have bad months. You're going to have good clients. You're going to have bad clients. You're going to have some months where four clients drop off and you're struggling to get any traction on gaining new clients and your content's doing shitty. And your girlfriend just broke up with you. And just like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like all these different things are, are hitting you at once. Um, and it seems to go in waves like that. And, and I think it's still, it's still hard now, but now I've been doing it long enough and I've rode those waves enough to realize, okay, three clients just dropped off. I just, you know, I just had $2,000 drop from my bottom line revenue. And it's like, I'm, I know I'm going to be okay because I know that this, well, one, I've planned for this, but then two, uh, it's like, I know that this is just part of, this is the price of admission, right? It's like, this is, yeah. you have to be able to deal with these mental battles of going up and down of good months and bad months and being able to continue to put out work in spite of there being bad months, but also 
I think another struggle that I, I have had more recently is like keeping my foot on the gas when things are going well. Cause now whenever things go well, I just like stop working. I just like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just not, not that I stop working, but even now I only work a couple hours a day and it's like, that's ideal for me. And some days maybe I work more. It's more so again, what I feel like doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand that that's a, that, that can sound very, uh, like privilege or whatever, but also I've worked very hard at this. And I also, it also depends on what you count as work, right? It, it's, it's all, it depends on what you count as work. Cause I love reading. If I could just read all day and just like give people advice, that's what I would do. Um, I, I really like that, but yeah, I think being able to ride those, ride those ups and downs. And then also whenever things are going well to continue to keep your foot on the gas, whenever things are going well, it's, it's keeping your foot on the gas whenever, yeah, most of the time, but then you need to, you need to take some time off. You need to coast a little bit too, but being able to recognize that and, and being able to stay even keeled, like staying the rock, whenever the waves are, are crashing down on you, I think is, is huge. And that's something that can help in all areas of life, but especially whenever it comes to coaching and like consulting work. That was good, man. I, I see that even just in my job. You know, once you start doing well, you're like, oh, I can take my foot off the gas a little bit. And then it catches up with you and you're like, oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, because it's, it's, all, it's usually because it's usually like the, the, the results you're getting now is typically like a lagging indicator of yeah. the, what you did two months ago. Exactly. Right. It's, it's like that's usually what ends up happening is like I'm, me not doing work right now isn't going to make me hurt right now. It's going to make me two hurt months. two months from now. Yeah. So it's just like it's funny how that can that can work. Um, so. Yeah, that's just something that's something to remember for sure. For, for anyone wanting to get started following in similar footsteps of yourself, where would you recommend them start? Or, or where would you just give them one big piece of advice? I mean, I know you basically just did that with the, with the struggles, but is there anything else that you would really recommend someone um, keep in the back of their mind, write down a sheet of paper and put up on their wall? Hmm. Um, well, this is a, I've talked about this several times before, I think on a couple podcasts, um, it's not my concept, but so how I said, I was big into mindfulness meditation. Um, uh, Sam Harris is a neuroscientist. Uh, he's got his PhD and he has an app called waking up and it's a meditation app. It's a guided meditation. And, uh, one of the, he also in, within the app, he has a bunch of different theories and lessons, uh, about, being mindful throughout your day and, and, and just kind of being able to center yourself and center your thoughts and the, you know, the quality of your thoughts dictate the quality of your life essentially, right? Like the more that you're able to understand your thoughts and realize that sometimes they can have power, sometimes they can't. And I, I think that that's, that's very important. But one of the concepts that I really love that he talks about that I use often not only for myself, but for my clients as well, is the concept of beginning again. And so it's, it's, it's just, it's just those two words. It's just begin mm -hmm. again. Um, and I think that at the, the premise is at any point in the day. So right now, after people turn this podcast off, after you turn this podcast off, no matter what has been going in through your mind the entire day, right. Or for the past year, or whatever it is, like you could be having the worst day ever. And then, or you've been, you know, your brain is scattered and your, your thoughts are everywhere, but you can turn this podcast off. You can take a deep breath and then you can simply begin again. And what that means is that there's no reason why in this very next moment, you can't kind of drop all of that and then make the next five, 10, three hours, whatever it is, the best five minutes of your life, the best 10 minutes of your life, the best three hours, the best, the most focused, you know, well aligned with your highest values possible. And I think that that concept to begin again has just been so key for me. It's the same thing in the gym, right? You're going in the gym and then you have, you ha you're, you've been having a shitty workout, your brain's been scattered, you've been texting too much, you're, you know, the pumps maybe not good. And then all of a sudden, you just, you realize you're distracted and your mind is frazzled. It's like, there's no reason that you can't just decide that the next set you do is the most, is the best set you've ever had in your entire life, right? You, the most, you have the most attention on it. You're focused. 
everything is, is in alignment, at least the best that you possibly can within that moment, right? It doesn't mean you're hitting PRs. It just means that you're doing the best you possibly can in that moment. And I think that that is a powerful message that I repeat to myself over and over and over again every single day, because this can be every five minutes. This could be the next hour, whatever it is. But you can just realize that it's not it's not a fresh start on Monday. It's not a fresh start tomorrow. It's not a fresh start when it's like at any moment you have the ability and the permission to begin again. And every moment is a fresh slate and you're able to, to, to make everything else after that the best it possibly can. And I think that that is, that's something that I've carried with me. That's been one of the best lessons that I've learned from that. And I think that's something other people would like too. man. I, I don't hear many people bring that up and it's a shame. I've tried to live by that for a while now too. I heard that in college and I'm like, man, not the exact yeah. beginning again, but just like this next decision you make, you are in full control of that. Right. Make it like serve you. It's, it's it. It's just, it's or just like, do your best. Like you can do yeah. like, there's, there's no reason. Whoop. Oh, there you are. Yeah. My laptop had to charge. Um, are we still there? Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right, excellent. But yeah, I think it's a, I, I, whenever I heard that, I was like, oof, that's powerful. And I think that that's something that I, I've, I talk to my clients about that all the time because nutrition and things, it's just so easy to get overwhelmed with stuff and feel so bad about all these things and beat yourself up and put all this pressure on yourself. And whenever you realize all that pressure is just made up in your head and it's like, all you have is this right now. It's like, then you can realize, oh, cool. I can drop all that and I can make this next moment the best i can possibly make it well dude the amount of value and knowledge and everything you dropped in this episode in this hour and 10 minutes has been insane thank you man i i, I enjoyed it i love podcasts it's why i started my own i'm glad you started it though because here's the thing is like even if there's nothing that comes from it you're going to grow so much as a person exactly. and you're going to grow your network and you're going to be able to speak better and you're going to be able to listen better and you're going to be able to ask better questions. And so it's like, I think everyone wants to start a podcast, not for anything to do with business, but because it makes them a Turn better communicator. Out. It yeah. makes them a better communicator. Uh, and so, so, so yeah, I always, and I also enjoy being the guest more because I fucking love talking about myself. So <laughs> instead of being the, the interviewer, um, but yeah, so thanks for, thanks for having me on. It really Dude, of course. It. It's yeah. so cool to uh, finally chat again, man, after so long, but yeah. where can everyone find you? Where can everyone follow you, your podcast, learn more about your coaching, everything? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so with the podcast, I actually don't do it anymore, but I might pick it up at some point. Um, I have like 300 episodes. So again, I've earned, my, I've earned my right to not <laughs> to not do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that the podcast is the More Than Fitness podcast. And then my website is mattmcleod.org. So that's M-A-T-T-M-C-L-E-O-D.org. And that'll have just about everything. But then also my Instagram is Matt McLeod six, just with the number six at the end of that. Um, and I think that, yeah, that should be it. That should be good. Cool. I'll make sure I have all that stuff in all the episode descriptions and whatnot. But dude, Perfect. thank you so much, man. I greatly appreciate it, Matt. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Have a good one, dude. Thanks. You too, bro.